What a crazy, crazy week of fantasy football. You had the studs that we knew about, like Mike White. Um, and then you had some major breaking news this morning about Derrick Henry. We're going to get into all of it, the studs, the duds. Like this episode, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Nice goatee. Fall is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And we want to thank Indochino. Look, the right outfit can bring out something special in us. And with Indochino, creating your best look yet can be more affordable than you think. We're talking totally, perfectly form-fitted, customized suits and clothing that is awesome. I personally have this. I've gone to one of their uh, one of their locations where yeah. they measure me and do everything. It was so easy. The best part is Indochino suits start at just $399 with all the customizations included. Every piece made to your exact measurements, and you could customize every single detail, whether it's custom-fitted shirts, suits, casual wear, and more. Indochino is now open at select Nordstrom stores, giving you even more ways to get great fitting and personalized clothing. Find your nearest location at Indochino.com, and right now you get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. And that is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I'm joined by my head shaking friend. The big shimmy, the nasty one. The punchable face. The punchable face. <laughs> That's my nickname today. The, oh. the man who was Guy Fieri, and now he has left. With a stupid goatee. With the remnants of Guy Fieri. I'm 90s dad here today to tell you guys to <laughs> uh, how to play. Jason Moore, how are you doing? How was Halloween? Halloween was great. We had a really good time. Um, the first time ever. My daughter went out on her own. Oh, yeah. Oh like, my. Oh man. Uh, but it was good. Everything everything worked out well. Um, she made it back home. Um, which is oh, an, that's that's good news. It's too. An important um important part of the night. But we had a great uh, Halloween. And now, more importantly, it's no it's, it's November first. It's, it's Christmas, Christmas time. time! Yeah! Woo! Put up those Christmas trees, put up your Christmas lights and decorate and put the music on because I don't care how curmudgeon you are, it's Christmas. Yes, indeed. I have, I've already broke out the Christmas shoes. Wearing, I'm wearing my Krampus highs today. Very nice. Very excited. Uh, we do have a, a quick note we want to drop you from Andy. You know, He's taking care of the family right now. And he's, he wants to thank everyone for the incredible kindness, the thoughts, the prayers for his son and the family. Uh, it, we're, we're all very moved by the outpouring of support. So thank you so much. And we're hoping that we'll get him back soon, either remotely or whatever. You know, he's just, he's right now he's in dad mode, taking care of what he needs to take care of. He should, uh, grow a goatee <laughs> so he can be nineties dad mode. I, I forget. I look like this because you just don't think about, yeah. And then every every now and then I'll I'll walk into a bathroom or I'll see myself on the monitor here and go, oh yeah, like when you, go tea. you forget you get a haircut uh -huh. and you're like, oh that's a that's a different human than I remember. All right, it was an incredible week of football. Before we move into the pun day, though, just want to remind people if you want to follow us on socials on Twitter at the FF Ballers at Jason FFL at FF Hitman and Andy is at Andy Holloway. If you want to watch this show with us. And Jay Grizz, the cardboard bear extraordinaire, holding it down over there. Congratulations on not a win, but an excellent performance by the future of your franchise. A Jay better Grizz. performance. Oh, he, he looked. I wouldn't say excellent. He looked great. He looked like he the looked greatest great. thing ever compared to his previous performance. That is ridiculous. He looked fantastic. He uh, being Justin Fields. Yeah, Justin Fields. And YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. 
Mm. But it is Monday, Jason. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. With we'll begin today's Monday Pun Day with Kenneth Painwell. Kenneth gain nothing. And um, Emmanuel Blanders. Emmanuel Sadness. I'll leave the next one for you, Jason. Oh, oh, it's Big Shimmy Garoppolo. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 um, Jerry. Jerry Pooty? Jerry oh, Pooty. No. Oh, but you have Michael Starter. What about Boston Great Scott? Boston Great Scott. Oh, this one should be you. Oh, apparently is now Michael Hitman Jr. Very nice. AJ Red Light Green Light. What? It's a shout out to Squid Game. <laughs> sure. Uh, we have uh, Kyle O. Oh, Kyle Pittstain. Yes, and Rob Gronkowski. Mm, and Pat Firemuth. Oh, he's so Luth. Oh, he got Luth. Oh, and we saw it. We saw it this weekend that the better rookie tight end <laughs> actually was oh. the better rookie tight end for fantasy. Oh, so my goodness. The Muth was Luth. He was incredibly Luth. All right. <laughs> Do we have anything else or should we get into the news? Well, there is... So much big news. Holy crap, there is. Let's go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Okay, the big breaking news before the games came out. Calvin Ridley was uh, announced again as he would miss the game for personal reasons. The second in, I believe, three weeks. That was quickly followed up by a note that he released on his social media saying that he's stepping away from football. Uh, He has some mental health stuff going on right now. So we wish the best for Calvin Ridley. But here's here's how I'm looking at what's going on with this guy. He is in the fourth year of his rookie contract, meaning they still have the fifth-year option. Mm -hmm. But this dude is playing right now for a mega deal. So that – that's that's the level of uh, of uh, of, problem. of of situation that Calvin Ridley is dealing with that he's saying I got to step away so whatever it is we hope that he works through it and we get to see him back on a football field sooner than later but the, the man needs to take care of the man right now yeah and I, I think you brought this up on Sunday live as well you when you miss games you know two out of three weeks for personal reasons um you 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 saw a lot of people were talking about the performance on the field was was not quite the same so right it, yeah I mean obviously the most important thing here is Calvin Ridley the man mm-hmm. um, getting right for fantasy purposes there's a lot of questions there's a lot of questions um, regarding what do you do if you have Calvin Ridley do you try to trade him and get something because we, there is no timetable Correct. like Calvin does not have a timetable. It's not like we don't know it. I don't think he knows it. So um, he could miss the whole season. He could be done for his career. He could come back in two weeks and and be fine. So this is really, I think, when you're looking at what do I do as a fantasy manager, you've got to take your team and your record and those type of things into account. You know, if, if it's a dynasty league, you just hold on to him. I assume that he will get right, be back, and he's a great um, long-term asset and in a redraft league if you need wins and you've got yeah. problems you might need to just trade him for something um, and it will depend on every single league who's willing to give up what for Ridley I'm personally I don't know that I would trade for I'm him. not trading for him right now yeah I wouldn't I'm, I'm just letting that go so that was yesterday then this morning we all woke up to the bombshell uh Fox Sports Jay Glazer reporting that Derrick Henry suffered a fracture of his fifth metatarsal, which is a toe, essentially, like the toe region. Not a doctor, not a doctor. But we saw Derrick Henry leave the field, you know, uh, second quarter, I can't can't recall exactly, had the shoe off and it was, oh. What's wrong with his foot? this This is a bad situation. The doctors are really looking at what's going on here. But he came back in the game. Yeah, he put a shoe back on, and then he had 28 and carries he, he said, on, I, a, on a broken foot. I am the Yeti. Now, watching him after he came back in, he's always been a uh, a, a locomotive, very 
slow to start and then incredible speed, but that start seemed even slower. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense now considering the, the guy was playing on a broken foot. I would run less fast on a broken foot. Yes, I would run not at all. Right, yes, I would, I would but, wheel around I with a, my broken foot. I am a mere mortal. Uh, however... It, it what's more under the ball of the foot we're being told that's the meditator. Oh, I'm thinking Correct. of the phalange. Yeah, I was I was wondering when you. I think it's I the don't long. Know. It's the long bone in the foot. Who? Correct. Uh, the scientific. All right, term we is got the it. Long bone. We got it. Yeah. We got there. This is why I'm just a stupid <clears throat> fantasy football analyst. Uh but anyways, the fallout. He's probably out for the season. He he he. It's, it's yes. like an eight week estimate. Can be longer. Theoretically, maybe he's back for the Tennessee Titans for the playoffs should they keep cruising as I believe they're the number one seed now in, oh, and, in the AFC. And, and not only that, but in their division, they have it completely locked up. They're, they're, they swept the Colts. They've got the record and the tiebreaker, and then the other two teams in the division are nothing. So this is a team whose centerpiece is Derrick Henry. They absolutely need to bring another guy in. Now there's... Uh, there's a few days left on the trade deadline, and I'm not sure they're wanting to give up enough to get a good name back. There's uh, there's talk they're bringing in Adrian Peterson, um, which is... Well, but why? Well, <laughs> because... Well, they have to bring someone in, I, right? Yes, because Darrington Evans, one of their other running backs, he's on the IR. Jeremy McNichols is a, is a fine, capable player, but you do need other bodies in the backfield to, to carry it out. To me... I I think that the Titans. This is where there's one name. Oh, is there? I think there's one name they okay, need to go get. You you can, right. you save that. To me, this is where coaching has to take over and you transform the team. You're now a pass team. You're a pass heavy team. You have AJ Brown looking like a a tank out there on that 50 plus yard touchdown. You will, you will get Julio Jones back. At this point, no one can replace Derrick Henry because there is only one. Derrick Henry, you can try and get supplemental, get some some players in there, so you don't have to be, you know, a seventy plus percent passing team. But I don't think you're replacing Henry. I think you need to completely change the the, the team. However, they will pick up a running back off a of free agency, like maybe Adrian Peterson, or they will trade for someone. Who is the name that you're thinking of, Jay? Well, I I don't think it's going to happen. But this is something that if I was both teams, I would do in a heartbeat. And that would be trade for Melvin Gordon, because okay, Melvin I don't Gordon, the, the you you cannot replace Derrick Henry. You can't because there's one of him. So it, it it doesn't it doesn't matter who you try to get. You're not you you're correct. You, this is going to have to become a more pass happy, pass centric team. But they do need a running game and getting Marlon Mack or getting you know Tyson Williams or someone like that. It's not going to do anything for you. It's not good enough for a true you know, pretty much locked into the playoffs team that wants to contend, someone like Melvin Gordon, he will be enough. He will suffice to help run most of your similar offense, um, be able to score around the goal line like Derrick Henry does. And you tell me that the the Broncos, who have their future in tow in Javante Williams, wouldn't take a draft pick for Melvin I'm, Gordon at this point? I'm telling you they won't because they are 4-4. Four and four. Like the the Broncos are playing to win now. If they were like if this is Jacksonville, you know, which we have some Jacksonville news as well. But I'm just saying, if a team with that type of record, then yes, you need to trade. But but it's not fair because their record is <laughs> is shallow and fake. Because the three three of their four wins were the three worst teams in the league. Yeah, but they don't look at it that way. A win's a win, man. Yeah, they should look at it that way though. Yeah, they look. They could consider it. James Robinson exited the game with a foot injury. It, we heard it. I think it was a heel injury. They have said he's managed. It's not a. It's not a significant injury. So he is day to day. Week nine. That status is in question, though. Yeah, it's great. Great news, though. It's funny because we left yesterday not worried about Derrick Henry and worried about James Robinson. And we come into today with the reverse. Right. Jay Glazer also reported Kyler Murray dealing with a medial ankle sprain, and the Cardinals are hoping the extra rest allows him to not miss games. So that's a wait and see. That would be a massive blow to the Cardinals and a massive blow to fantasy football. Jameis Winston 
The New Orleans Saints quarterback suffered a knee injury. It is believed to be significant. If you watched it happen, he is he's uh, not horse collared, but like dragged twisted down, like a horse. Yeah, collar. dragged down from the back. The knee does things that the that knees are not supposed to do. He tried to walk off the field, went down. This is incredibly unfortunate for Jameis. Like the Saints, man, the yeah. New Orleans Saints. Just beat the Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team that is, along with the Buffalo Bills, one of the favorites to go back to the Super Bowl this year. They did it half with, with Jameis Winston and half with their third-string quarterback, mm -hmm. Trevor Simeon. Trevor Simeon. I believe when he went down, it was 7-7. Seven to seven. What? So they did it entirely in one in one way with Trevor Simeon. And Taysom Hill, uh, there's a lot yes. of questions of, okay, tra trade deadline's coming up. Are you going to go try to trade for a Jimmy Garoppolo or someone like that? Um, and Taysom Hill is expected to be back on Wednesday. Uh, don't know the entire health, but I, I think he will be their quarterback going forward the rest of season. Whether he gets back this week or not um, will be determined yes, this week. Yes, Taysom Hill is expected to clear the concussion protocol uh, by week nine. Taysom Hill goes right into being a legit fantasy Start of the week, called it. Okay, you, you called it. Uh, Sam Darnold had to exit the, uh, the game in the fourth quarter with a concussion. Rob Gronkowski saw one target and then left the game with back spasms. That was – that's a bad beat, man. That's a bad fantasy beat. Hopefully Gronk is okay. If you didn't see the Sunday night game, Dak Prescott was warming up but he did not play. It didn't matter it because because well. Cooper Rush took down the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know, man. The Minnesota Vikings took themselves down. Woof, woof. They were at home. Woof against Cooper Rush. They put up what sixteen points. Woof, gross. I yeah. am so sorry for Minnesota Vikings fans. You have such a a hard run of it because you always have a good team, but you just always have heartbreak. It's just not yep. fair to the Vikings fans. And also, I'm so upset with the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Do better. Yes. Uh, also, I have heard on the social medias that it's my fault because... Oh, oh it is your fault. You in, heard. In the, in the Dynasty League, I have this magical power where whichever quarterback I start, they play bad. And it's between Kirk Cousins and Daniel Jones, so... Daniel Jones about oh, to go off tonight. Put the bets in. If Daniel Jones has a monster game tonight. Like, he will have a monster game tonight. We all know it because it's happened every single week of this season. I have no choice but to to factually factually believe that I am causing these things to happen. Um, if you look at the <laughs> crazy game logs of Christian Kirk, you posted this in our of company. Kirk Cousins, of, yes. Of, yes, of Kirk Cousins. Um, and you look, and he scored 26 points, 31 points, 31 points, 12, 15, 34, 15. Guess which <laughs> ones Mike started him for? It was all of the bad ones. It's incredible. I'm, I am very good at this. Good job. T.Y. Hilton exited with a concussion. He has already been ruled out for week nine because they play on Thursday night. The Bears running back Damian Williams, he exited with a left knee injury. It, did, it didn't turn into a, a great game for Khalil Herbert, unfortunately. Now, Khalil Herbert was a little banged up in that game, too. Yeah, he Is was. any news on him? I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, producing staff. See if you could find out the, the latest on him. Just a moment. Miles Sanders, well, I don't know if we had talked about it on the podcast yet, but he is on the injured reserve, so he will miss three games. And as, you know, as I thought, Kenneth Gainwell, the running back to while Miles Sanders is playing. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. naturally, he's going to see a bump up. Maybe Boston Scott takes some work, but Kenneth Gainwell should be. St you did also say that you thought Boston Scott yes. was a good start. You'd start both of those guys. You shouldn't have. Yeah, no, I was I was half right. <laughs> yes, you, Boston Scott was a great start. The running game against the Detroit Lions, great. Um, Kenneth Gainwell, at the same time as getting his opportunity – promoted mm -hmm. got demoted he was the clear third back in the rotation if you look at the end of game uh carries you might say oh he was number two he was not he had one carry through the first three quarters and then they were up like 41 nothing 
and in comes backup quarterback and Kenneth Gainwell, who's apparently well, – I don't know how that happened, why that happened, that yes. he just got um, – the, the first report we saw of anything like this was actually during the warm-ups to the game. Someone was reporting the surprising news that Kenneth Gainwell was – running with the backup quarterback and the second stringers while Boston Scott was taking all the first uh, string warm-up reps. And it was just surprising. But that I think that was one of the biggest um, hurts this week. Yes, and we were talking about perhaps the addition of Miles Sanders' uh, snaps and opportunities as his share was going up. Maybe that was less about Miles Sanders or more about Kenneth Gainwell. So it will be a situation to monitor because – Sanders is going to miss two more games. Boston Scott could be a, a, a plug-and-play guy. Coach Pete Carroll of the Seahawks acknowledged on Friday that Chris Carson is in danger of missing the rest of the season with his neck injury. This sucks uh, for Chris Carson, and that locks Alex Collins in here to a pretty strong role. Robert Tunyon, the update, it was confirmed. I mean, it was you, you saw it coming. We knew but, it, yeah. But it was confirmed it is a torn ACL, so he will miss the remainder of the season. The update for tonight's game, Sterling Shepard and Kadarius Tony are now both projected to play. So that, that's great. Well, of course. Of course Kadarius Tony is going to play. Oh, yeah, because, because Daniel Jones is about to ball you're out. Giants fans, you're welcome. You are welcome. Had I uh, had, had I not had had I started, you played yeah. uh, Daniel Jones, I mean, Daniel Jones would be probably – Gone at the first quarter mark. <laughs> Kadarius Tony would not be playing tonight. Oh. So you are welcome, Giants fans. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper. Join the Breaking Alerts channel. It's faster than every other source. And before we get to the stud muffins this week, want to thank today's sponsors and Fight Camp. The holidays are coming up. I mean, they're Ow. here right now. And we all know, as fun as it is, it's also a very stressful time of the year. And we have the perfect gift to get everyone some much needed stress relief. It's Fight Camp. I just set mine up. I got mine. I haven't I haven't broken it in yet, but I got it set up. I am ready to go and I am very excited. Fight Camp brings the best workout in the world to your home and it makes it fun. I put on a couple of the videos. I watched them. They are they are outstanding. You can learn to box or kickbox from home with access to world-class programming, elite trainers. The the equipment is great. The technology is great. They can track your uh, your punches. You can, you know, look at your progress over time. There's quick workouts. There's thousands of, of classes and um, they do everything. They, they've got full body workouts. You can, you know, finish with abs um, after every single uh, event. You've got brain fitness. Bo Ooh. Boxing requires focus. Yes, it does. Precise combinations to push you to think about every punch you throw. It's the ultimate way to clear your mind and forget you're working out. And now is the best time to get your fight camp. You could take advantage of the holiday deal going now. If you purchase this November, you'll get an additional pair of gloves for free. And these gloves are awesome. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get an additional pair of gloves for free all November. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Foot Clan, today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, which you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. Ladies and gentlemen, like just being able to talk through things is a powerful tool. If you, if, if you have anxiety, if you have depression, if you are sitting on something and just thinking about it over and over, it, it won't just fix itself. And often, you know, talking to a counselor, that's the way to get it done. I have experienced this many times in my life. It's been a tremendous help and a tremendous tool, and BetterHelp is changing the face of that. Uh, the service is available to clients worldwide. They're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they, can, they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed, and it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Visit BetterHelp.com slash footballers. That's better H-E-L-P. Join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Fantasy footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. 
All right, Jason. There's a lot of studliness that needs to be talked about. Mm-hmm. Let's go. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Josh Allen. I don't know. I don't know how. Unbelievable. <laughs> I So, you know, in the DraftKings lineup, I paid up for Josh Allen. Yeah. Which was a huge mistake. About because, three quarters of the game? Yeah, because he had done nothing. He was, he was you know, I was trailing and Josh Allen didn't. He finished as the, uh, checks notes, quarterback one on the week because at the end of the game. They had he had three points at halftime, right? Uh, Something like that. I mean, it was it horrifically was crazy, bad. But it goes off. Uh, about 250 passing yards, two scores, and then, of course, eight carries for 55! 55 yards on the ground and a score. This is the exciting one. Oh, man. Mike White of the New York Jets, 37 of 45 for 405 yards, three passing touchdowns against, at that moment, the AFC leading Cincinnati Bengals. But Mike White came in and said, I'm your franchise I, quarterback. He, he said, you you, you want to see how I do it? Because I'm putting up the second most fantasy points ever in someone's first start. Wow. Mike White, take a victory lap at whatever you need. Like this this moment was incredible. You won the no, game. No one, no one bet on the Jets in this game. He dominated. He threw two picks, one of which was completely not his fault. Yes. Uh, hit Michael Carter in the hands or head and popped it up and <laughs> right. intercepted. Mike White was unbelievable, and I just love that this happened because of the turmoil that this could cause within the Jets organization. Because, uh, you know, obviously when you're number two overall pick is healthy he's coming right back into the starting lineup yes he is you just traded for joe flacco which you can't put joe flacco in right no and they've already said no what uh like coach sala was asked yeah i didn't see the video but just saw a quote of it there's said because uh, they're thursday they're playing the colds said is, is mike white gonna start and he's like yes of course he's yes gonna of start. course rest of season which, <laughs> no but like good good on the coaching staff they made a move they thought they had to make to go get a veteran quarterback to help them float through these couple weeks while they wait for Zach Wilson. But Mike White played so well. He's like, yes, I'm not even going to think about it. We, we will give him another chance. None of the uh, old, uh, I would have yes. to go check the tape. Yes, they didn't do any of that crap. Like They used the emotion of the moment and said, we're going to move forward with Mike White this week. Can he get it done against the Colts? TBD. Yes, Jimmy Garoppolo. I think he can. Real quick, this sure, week is okay. fun. Three of the top five passing yard quarterbacks this week are number one Mike White yes number three Cooper Rush and number five Davis Mills this was a crazy week what a world Jimmy Garoppolo had himself a monster game uh, mostly because of two rushing touchdowns and because on third and 20 they threw essentially a screen to Debo Samuel, who took it all the way down to the one. It's not fair. It was fair like an 80-yard reception. That Garoppolo gets those yards. Like, he did nothing. That was yeah. all Debo. And Chicago looked like they could take this game away, pushing Trey Lance's see season even closer, but they won another game, so Jimmy Garoppolo will be the starter. But Arizona Rams are the next two matchups. Tom Brady uh, continues to be great. Except in crunch time. How's that feel, Tom Brady? Yeah, he did stink at the end of that game. He should have thrown a pick, and then he's like, oh, no, thank goodness I didn't do that. Pick <laughs> the next play. But he's the quarterback one on the season. Obviously, for he's fantasy, great. he's great. Yeah. Don't bench him except this coming week when he's on bye. Justin Fields, 19 for 27, only 175 passing yards, but had a, had a passing touchdown, and 10 for 103. And a score on the ground, in, yes. including the uh, the score was a a crazy fourth down sc uh, scramble. That was he awesome. Was, he ran all over the field and then got in the the game plan. Like I'm not I'm not saying, but, but I am. Yeah. I I am saying that this was a different game plan for Justin Fields. He was rolling out. He was. They using, were using his mobility. Go figure. Yes. Matt Nagy is on the, 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 the COVID list, was not there for the game, and the right. offense looked like one 
that was actually trying to use the strength of the quarterback. It was so refreshing. And, and yes, it was a good game for Justin Fields. He looked good. We've been saying over the first seven weeks of the season, like, we haven't seen any flashes. Right. Like, you just want to see, like, you can be bad. You're a rookie. Yep. But we haven't seen any flashes of brilliance. No good plays with the arm or the leg. And in this game, we had like 10. Really, there were still some rookie mistakes. It's some plays I would be like, okay, that's definitely on him. But there were so many good plays where you're like, oh, he has special talent. It's nice to be able to see it. So Yes, it was great for the future. Matthew Stafford had himself another monster game, 303 against the Houston Texans. Ryan Tannehill, uh, it's probably going to get more consistent with the, the passing game with Derrick Henry out. And, oh man. And of course, this one. Geno Smith goes 20 for 24, nearly 200 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. He had a rushing touchdown, and that correlated with Tyler Lockett <laughs> having himself a great game, which we will get to that, whatever. Uh, running backs, Michael. Carter has a new best friend, and his name is Mike White because Mike White checks down to the running back position. 14 targets. 14 targets, 9 for 95 through the air, and also 15 for 77 on the ground and a score. Michael Carter had himself a tremendous game, a real breakout game. Michael Carter had nine targets the week prior, and that was what because you kept highlighting. Because of White. That was yes. what you were highlighting last week, was that when Mike White came in, he was passing to Michael Carter all the time, and it did not go away. Michael Carter was the number one running back on the week because he had more targets than most wide receivers get. Um, and when you get those, I mean, you know, they're all catchable. They're right there at the line of scrimmage. So uh, going forward, Michael Carter, at least for one more week, that's what I was going to say, is, is going to be great is does Zach Wilson watch that game and go, huh, me, huh? Oh, no. Maybe. Zach Wilson doesn't watch that game. <laughs> like, I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm saying he's not putting it's too, that. It's too painful. No, no. That's, he doesn't. He can't learn anything from that. Uh, Joe Mixon uh, had, had a nice game. You know, he was very pretty easy to project this one, but he did come through. Not super efficient but multiple touchdowns. P. Ryan did nothing because the game script where... Yeah, you, that is true. You know you can run on the Jets. That's why Mixon was a great play, and that's yeah. why I thought P. Ryan would be a good play because in the fourth quarter, you're just going to bench your starters and, oh, you lost the game. You lost to the Jets. Daryl Henderson continues to have a dominant fantasy football season. Austin Eckler, 11 for 64 and 1, saw 10 targets, and this was we were... We weren't even sure that Austin Eckler was going to play. Missed multiple days with a hip injury, uh, multiple days of practice. And this is the second time this through. year that he's popped up on the injury report. It was a hamstring one game earlier where it's like, man, you think you're going to lose him. And then he goes out and just plays great. Aaron Jones from Thursday had a monster game on the back of 11 targets. The missile, mm. Elijah Mitchell. Elijah. 18 for 137 and 1. This is sticky. Elijah Mitchell is going to continue to be great. He could have certain game scripts where he gets phased out because he doesn't he doesn't touch the ball on third down and he doesn't catch the ball. Uh, but I think that he you could play him as a uh, as a running back two with confidence, and he, he has upside each and every week. Yeah, uh, he. I think he's a, a very, very good play, but you're right. If they are getting boat raced, you're going to see a lot more of uh, Jermichael Hasty out there. It's very frustrating that, that, that Elijah is never on the field on third down, but it was nice to see when they got near the goal line Yes, that Elijah was in those packages. I know their goal line back is obviously Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, he's just dominant. <laughs> of course. As a, as a mobile quarterback. Um, but Elijah should be good, but you want him more in the close matchups, um, not in the blowouts. So they're playing against Arizona this week. And at the very best, Arizona's got a hurt mm -hmm. Kyler Murray. Right. And at a hurt the worst, DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, at the worst, they have a backup quarterback. So it could be another good week for Elijah. Jonathan Taylor and Najee Harris continue to have strong fantasy games. That's fantastic to Jonathan see. Jonathan Taylor continues to have a nice schedule. The yeah. Jets and the Jaguars. Yep. Uh, I would start in the next two weeks. The Eagles, not Kenneth Gainwell. Boston Scott and Jordan Howard, both multi-touchdown games. 
Jalen Hurts. Who, Come on, man. <laughs> Jalen Hurts, who uh, you know has been described as not the best real life quarterback, but an absolute stud for fantasy football. He had not had a bust game yet. He was going up against the Detroit Lions. And, and he the, finally plays well in real life and, and gets he gets benched in the fourth quarter because the team is blowing out the Detroit Lions 41 to nothing. 41 to nothing. <laughs> and he doesn't get a single four rushing touchdowns that weren't Jalen Hurts legs. Oh that hurt because I had the Jalen Hurts Devonta Smith stack which if you told me that they were going to score 44 points, oh yeah. I'd be so excited, but I was not excited. I was hurt. Melvin Gordon with a multi-touchdown game. At the wide receiver position, A.J. Brown, 11 targets, 10 for 155. Mm. And the score, A.J. Brown is just, he's unstoppable. Michael Pittman, hello, 15 targets, 10 for 86, two scores, pity city. It was fantastic. He is getting the volume. The, the matchup was there for Tennessee, but... Him with uh, Jonathan Taylor, he also gets the New York Jets and he gets the Jacksonville Jaguars. You're making a face over there. There is breaking news. Should, um, I, hit, should I hit the button? Sure. Uh, where is that button? It's right here. Breaking news. Thank you. So this is uh, this is less for your casual fantasy league, but big NFL news. The Broncos are finalizing a trade to send eight-time Pro Bowl linebacker Von Miller. What? To the Los Angeles Rams. What? That's upsetting. But my point in 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 breaking this is you just brought up that they're four and four. Yeah. There's a team that wants to win now. I don't know. You just sent Von Miller away to build for the future. Maybe ship out Melvin Gordon. Maybe. Uh, there had been a lot of whispers about Von Miller because his he needs a new contract. Why does everybody go to the NFC West? Go somewhere else. Because they know they can win there. But Va Von Miller is in the last year of his deal. He's 32 years old. He's going to want another deal. So I don't blame them for trying to get something now while they could. But that is, that's an interesting move. Uh, Michael Pittman, as we said, another uh, great game. Chris Godwin, 12 targets, 8 for 140 and a score. Amari Cooper. Uh, because we had the Cooper to Cooper situation of Amari Cooper with Cooper Rush. 13 targets turned into 8 for 122 and a score, including the game-winning score. Oh, that was did such you, a, that was such an awesome... Did you see, uh, apparently there was a, a conversation about who was going to get the the opportunity no. to try and win the game. No. Uh, Amari Cooper told the story, and CeeDee Lamb was lobbying very diff very hard for himself. Of and, course, that's what wide receivers do. <laughs> and Cooper Rush was like, "No, it's it's this other play." And Amari, and so Ceedee Lamb asked Amari, "I don't, it's just very strange." But he said, "Like, you know, do, uh, do we? You think I should get this one?" And Amari Cooper said, "No." <laughs> yes, <laughs> this will go to me. <laughs> I've got to go watch that. That's the best thing I've I've ever heard. That they're just debating like who's going to get the opportunity. I want it. No, I want it. What do you think? Should I have it? No, me. And the fact of him like going to another. Uh, it's like going to mom after dad <laughs> says no. Can I have candy? No. And then you go ask mom, can I have candy? Sure, honey. You just heard him say no. Uh, also, you got to find the hanging with Mr. Cooper drop because oh. a Cooper to Cooper connection. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh, speaking of Coopers, Cooper Cup, nine targets, seven for one fifteen, and score. He Ho is hum. he is unstoppable. Tyler Lockett, <laughs> the week. Look, I have been I've been I have been fighting off the pressure. I have been rejecting it. That no matter what, I'm still just I'm going to keep playing Tyler Lockett. This week, I finally give in, and I'm like. I, j I can't do it anymore. I've been I've been beat up too badly, Tyler. I can't keep supporting this. I cannot keep starting you. You are actively losing fantasy football matchups for people. 13 targets, 12 for 142. 12 <laughs> receptions from Geno Smith. Dang it, Smith. Tyler. 
on most people's <laughs> bench. Actually, in Yahoo, he was still started fifty three percent of the time. So some, so there's there's you know people getting this, but I know that. If you benched him, now you're going, okay, the targets were there, so you can keep playing him. But that's when he hurts you is when you play him. So how happy are all Tyler Lockett managers to know that they're on bye week this week? They're so relieved. It's the mm. first time ever they're thrilled that one of their uh, players are on bye because they don't have to make that decision. And Russell Wilson could be back week 10. Yeah. So Which is the, coming out of the bye. So that, that'll be a situation to monitor. Debo Samuel, goodness gracious, this guy is, like I said, he he took a uh, third and 20 and turned that into a, what was almost a touchdown had his toe not dragged uh, out of bounds just before he scored. Now you're a mile, a mile, 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 mile. Six for 171, just an absolute monster. Robert Woods came through with a solid game as well. Since we not four. a lot of work, but three for thirty-five and a score, three carries for twenty-two and a score on the ground. Yeah, I mean, he got off to a really slow start, but since week four, he's the wide receiver eight. What? He's, yeah, he's been very. Con it's it's ironic because because it's not on volume, but it's consistent. Like he has not been outside of a wide receiver three. He's been in the top thirty-six every single week since week four, which is five games in a row. So those first three, boom, bam yuck games that kind of caused everybody to just say Robert Woods is dead I, that seems to be the you know the abnormal that's the lie um, and and I think what happened is we realized that the volume that Robert Woods used to get was gone and that's still true he has not been outside of one massively targeted week he has not been a volume play mm-hmm but the reality is this is a very good offense. And when you are a very good offense, you have more scoring opportunities. Uh, you know, the efficiency of your touches goes up. At the tight end position, Jason T.J. Hawkinson, 11 targets, 10 for 89. You love to see it. And yes. I, I had someone that I was talking trades with be like, well, yeah, but they were down. And I'm like, yeah, but it's the Lions, baby. They're always going to be down. <laughs> if, you're, if your argument is that, well, they were down, if, if that's the argument, the counter argument would say, yeah, they were down to the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. And that that should be Not a, many people can say that. Like that should be a point in favor of TJ Hawkinson volume. Dan Arnold, ten targets turned into eight for sixty eight. And then of course the oh, Muth the Muth was loose. The Muth got Luth. Seven targets, four for forty-four, and, and one game-winning touchdown. It honestly, it should have been more. I don't. Who was the? Who uh, was that guy? Number eighty-one. We got. I've got to look up his name. I think it was. I hate him. I Gen hate him. I don't Gentry? know who he is. Yeah, I think that's right. I, I'm. We got to verify this man's name because he was ruining all of our. Yeah, fun. Zach, Zach Gentry. Get out of here! Zach. Get out of here, Zach! Nobody likes you. You're you're a fine football player, but yes, you don't have a, a fun thing to say like the Muth is loose. You're too tight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You're, you're yes. way too tight not, to be out there. He could never loosen up. No, you gotta let 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 the Muth loose, man. So uh, yeah, we were very sad to see Zach Gentry out there catching. Yeah, I'm sure Pittsburgh was super happy about it, but I wasn't. Pooped in his big boy pants. Kyler Murray on Thursday had an absolute stinker of a game. Justin Herbert. Now, I saw a Monday Punday of Justin Horabert, <laughs> which I liked. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. But Justin Herbert, after that 50-point monster game against Cleveland, has been letting people down. Uh, is there any concerns about him moving forward? Gets to take on Philadelphia and Minnesota in the next two matchups. Do you have any Justin Herbert concern? Um, yeah, I mean, look, he you you forgive going on the road to Baltimore, but being at home against the Patriots off of a bye week, you would expect better things. Um, I th I think there's obviously correlation here to Mike Williams, um, who in the beginning of the season, Mike Williams seemed absolutely unstoppable. Yes. But the last two weeks, two really bad games for Herbert. Uh, Mike Williams was the wide receiver 72 and the wide receiver 73. Um, combined in those two games did not amass 50 yards together. So I don't know if teams have – I mean, obviously Baltimore and New England, they're two good defenses, right? They're coming up against Philadelphia and the Minnesota Vikings the next two weeks. 
So I'm not going to, I'm not concerned to the point where I would pivot Bail. off of either guy. Okay. Uh, wide receivers are inconsistent, but if if Mike Williams continues to get shut down and something has kind of been unlocked, if if uh, some defensive package is exposed that that they are struggling with over the next couple weeks, then you'd be concerned. For now, I'm just I'm going to trust in the talent of those two great football players. Matt Ryan had a dud of a game. Uh, I mean, Kyle Pitts didn't come through. Cal, he was without Calvin Ridley, but Matt Ryan did. Uh, that what he played through if you didn't see the footage gruesome his non-throwing hand got fully cleated like on the ground just smashed by a man not a that, finger a, a man that probably weighs 300 plus pounds I don't all know. of his hand and then his hand was just gushing <laughs> gushing blood we were like, we it was it, i mean if you're squeamish you don't want to watch it right but there were plenty of great jokes he put a glove on mm -hmm. afterwards because he had to to keep I don't yeah. know his bones in. I mean, it was gnarly, and the fact that he he kept the drive going. He eventually, of course, threw an interception on that one. But Matt Ryan is probably off the streaming radar for but quite some time. Now, what about the the whole Atlanta Falcons offense here without Ridley? Like, obviously, they were without Ridley a couple of weeks ago. But that was wasn't that the like the Jacksonville Jaguars? Or I mean, uh, that was yeah, the, the London game or the Jets. I think that's where I think it was the, the Kyle Jets. Pitts breakout game. Yes, the Kyle. Yes. I think that was the Jets. So, um, you know, it's one of those like going forward, like next week at New Orleans. If you don't have Calvin Ridley, that and, and all you have to do is stop essentially Kyle Pitts. You saw the the Carolina Panthers put Gilmore, who was back, on Kyle Pitts. And Kyle Pitts did not know how to deal with an actual great NFL corner who's focused on him. And usually you can't put your great corner on him because, you know, you've got Calvin Ridley. But right. if Calvin Ridley's gone, I, I worry about this offense and I worry about Pitts. Jalen Hurts, we already talked about him. Kirk Cousins, we also <laughs> talked about him having a – Primetime Kirk Cousins. A pretty poor game at the running back position. Dalvin Cook and Zeke, under the bright lights, had pretty poor games. Uh, not games that you were hoping to get. DeAndre Swift. This one was baffling to me. Early Sunday morning, Jamal Williams, a.k.a. Jay Willie, was ruled out. And this was DeAndre Swift. Holy crap. You know, not that Williams was taking a ton of work, but that's even more here for Jamal or for DeAndre Swift that turned into 12 carries, 27 rushing yards on 12 carries, five targets. That was five the surprising targets. Number. Like, DeAndre Swift's calling card is in the receiving game, and he saw five targets. It's so bizarre in 71% of the snaps. So, I mean, that's just yeah, yeah, ten, ten just target, a bad game and move on. Ten targets the week prior, seven before that. So to only have five in a game where you lost six to 44, and you played the snaps, you know, this wasn't like, oh, we're down so much, we're not going to play him. Um, very surprising, very bad game, and he fumbled. Sure. Um, so it was just awful. But you're not gonna bench him until. But they are on by this week. Kenneth Gainwell is on a milk box somewhere. His photo. Leonard Fournette, eight for twenty six, five targets, three for seventeen. I mean, the Saints are a pretty stout defense, so I would just, you know, it's a one game blip. Move on. They get Washington and, and the Giants coming yeah. out of their bye week. Here's the more scary yes. yeah. one. Antonio Gibson. Yeah. Antonio Gibson. Yeah, there's 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 an alarm going off. He so, was not absent from this game. He did not come out of the game due to injury. And yet he was splitting the the already split work. Yes, it was a lot of J.D. McKissick. It was a lot of Jared Patterson. Eight carries, three targets. And what is so baffling about this, Antonio Gibson, who we know has been, he, we've been, he's been dealing with injury, right? He has the, the stress fracture in his shin. He was removed from the injury report insinuating that it's no longer bothering him to the point where it needs to be reported to the NFL. And that turned into him being the RB3 on the depth chart. I, have, I don't know what's going on. 11 here. carries went to Jarrett Patterson. And he was in the game um, like immediately. This wasn't at the end. 
Antonio Gibson gave it a the good old college try and just couldn't get it done, so they go to Patterson. No, this is this was part of their plan. They have the bye week, then Tampa Bay, then Carolina. Two this, of the best run defenses out there. This sucks. That's it, a month long stretch of yikes. And so this is where Andy in our uh league traded yes. Antonio Gibson for Damian Harris. So far so good. Yes. And I think over the next month, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna look- prove to be to be valuable. Obviously, when you get to the playoffs, if if Gibson can heal up, you've got the double Philadelphia games uh, at Philly and at home against Philly in the playoffs. So hopefully brighter days are ahead. But I think they're, I think it's a long tunnel to get to those. <laughs> yeah, you know, to to get to the bright light on the other side. Uh, let's. Nick Chubb didn't have that great of game. Sixteen for sixty-one. Uh, Dearness Johnson was the one who ended up getting the the rushing touchdown. Alex Collins against the Jags, only 10 for 44. Granted, Geno Smith balled out through the air, so that's where I would uh, lean for that one. Miles Gaskin, Javante Williams. Man, what is what is going on here with Miles Gaskin? Is it because we thought we could play him this week because Malcolm Brown was out? Is that what happened? Well, I mean, Buffalo's a great defense, so it's one of those things where what you saw at the beginning of the year is is what you got this week too I mean he was the running back 36 which is for the most part worthless he's gonna hurt your team he got 12 carries four targets that's about what he's gonna get for a bad team with a poor quarterback I mean you look at the beginning of the year he was the running back 26 the running back 36 the running back 32 this last week running back 36 that's what he is um you know I th- this was a player I wasn't hot on coming into the season just because he had kind of an outlier experience last year that did not seem like it can ha- keep going and now they're getting some of their receiving options back Devontae I was Parker, say, Devontae Parker had himself a at least a decent game and his final line was 11 targets eight for 85 like that's, yeah, a, that's phenomenal that's a good week he was a wide receiver too against Buffalo's yeah. great defense um and when you have I mean, they, they don't want to throw the ball to Miles Gaskin 10 times. They don't want to do that. They want to throw the ball to Will Fuller. They just can't. They want to throw it to Devontae Parker. They just haven't been able to. And Jalen Waddell. Um, so, uh, you know, Gaskin is is just a, a PPR, you know, running back three. David Johnson and Philip Lindsay, the, the, the boys from the Houston Texans, uh, I expected a volume increase for David Johnson. And he, in fact, saw a volume decrease. Well, then Philip Lindsay obviously was the volume uh, winner, right? Oh no, he had three carries. Oh, okay. So Rex Burkhead, remember Bur- who only had four carries? Yeah, they, they basically didn't run. But he ball. also had four targets. Like I don't know what's going on here in Stay Houston. Away. So uh, I thought David could be interesting. I was wrong on that one at the wide receiver position. Mike Williams yet again, two for nineteen. Uh, only five targets yeah but philadelphia minnesota should be better games ahead justin Jefferson. we did talk before this game about the fact that new england is famous for taking away whatever your number one option right keenan allen had a had a great game game, because they took away the number one option which was mike williams so i'm not i'm not worried about that justin jefferson four targets two for 21 all of minnesota was bad emmanuel sanders was one of the hottest wide receivers in football, in fantasy football. In DFS. Oof. For the last month, and he, he got put you on, up a zero. He got you on Halloween. I mean, Yes, he, he just, did. He, he, it was a trick. It wasn't a treat. You're like, yeah, we, ah, ah, thank you. Ah. we say trick or treat, eh, not realizing that you are saying you can, you can give me a trick. That's. In this contract that I am offering you, you can try to trick me. Right. But when we like say the it, razor blade in the apple. Yeah, like, but, 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 yeah. <laughs> but when we say it, you know, it's just oh, that means it only means treat. Right. Listen to the words that we're using here, people. Emmanuel Sanders did. Yes. And he said, "Gotcha." <laughs> yeah. What he, do you, What do you do with Sanders? Do you Do you, you worry keep, about that? No, you just. And, keep wh- and what about Cole Beasley? Because Cole Beasley was like, this was, was this was a Beasley game. Yes. I, I don't know. I'll I'll look treat at, it like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where you you sure you play them all because you've got a great quarterback. You know that the offense is going to score a lot of points. You're just going to have down weeks from 
you know, all three guys being Diggs, Sanders, and Cole Beasley aren't going to have all three great games at the same time very often. Terry McLaurin, ugh, man, ugh, what what what's going on in Washington and makes me very sad. DJ Moore, eight targets, four for 59. Perhaps Christian McCaffrey is back next week. That is a big perhaps. We don't know. The last thing I saw from head coach Matt Ja Rule was we're still not sure. It, it wasn't the, yes, we're getting our guy back this week. I've seen him. He's ready to go. So let's be hopeful. Let's be optimistic that McCaffrey will play, but it's very possible that he does not. The Broncos against Washington, four targets, two for 40 for Cortland Sutton. Jerry Judy hot off of the injury, four targets, cut all four, only 39 yards. This was extremely disappointing that the Broncos weren't able to do more uh, against a vastly inferior defense. Everybody sucked. Yeah. for the. I mean, the Broncos won the game, but they didn't. They sure tried to lose at the end. Oh, yeah, they did. They're They're – their play calling, the timeouts, the turnovers, were, it was just unbelievably – it was entertaining, though. They were like, yeah, well, let's sure. make it funny, um, and they did. But at least Noah Fant had a bad game, um, so that so there's that. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, the only scores were both Melvin Gordon, so if you didn't have Melvin Gordon, then you were sad. Devontae Smith had a bad game. Now, Allen Robinson, do we do we keep doing this to him? Do we keep saying that he pooped in the big boy pants? I don't think he's wearing pants anymore, man. <laughs> I mean, he can just drop it right on the grass. They are full. How many pants does he? Oh, build? he has taken. He is. He's not allowed to buy any more pants. <laughs> I mean, this. He. I don't know that he can be in this. You again? <laughs> you again at the pants store? You're not welcome here. You have pooped in too many pants, Mister that's, Robinson. That's right. So yeah, I think we retire uh. Allen Robinson from being able to poop in big boy pants. Um. You drop him and get rid of him. He's he's got Pittsburgh this week, a bye ne the following week, Baltimore after that. Like, just a brutal part of fantasy football is, you know, you know that some of the players drafted in the first, second, and third, there will be guys who are a bust for fantasy football. A lot of time, it's injury related, like things you couldn't see coming, and even if you projected. Like, it's Andy Dalton, it's Justin Fields. It's not the best situation here for, for Allen Robinson. Projecting what has actually taken place, like, it is, it, it is, it hurts inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have, I've, my soul is in pain for what is happening with Allen Robinson. Russell Gage didn't want Emmanuel Sanders to feel left out with a goose. So, Russell Gage also had a goose. Kyle Pitts, Dalton Schultz, Tyler Higby. Noah Fant, Zach Ertz, Hunter Henry, Ricky Seals Jones. It was a bad. It was. It, Did anyone have on a on paper? It seemed like a good week for streaming tight ends because yes. a lot of the matchups were there. You know, Higby's matchup was there. They pretty much all the streaming options suck, which is good news because you probably played one, but right. you probably played against one. Um, hopefully you you know look. Hopefully you played the Muth. Yeah, it's so it's like. You know the, the the phrase the all ships rise, you know with with the with the tide. What is the opposite? Uh, the I mean, is it just as easy as all ships go down with a, with a drought? So it's rising tide raises all ships. So yeah, it's lowering tide. I was hoping there was something yeah, better. Drain the, the <laughs> drain the ocean. I don't know. Uh, here, here's here's how bad it was for tight end this Sorry week. Sorry for trying to yeah. set that one up. So. Tight end one was TJ Hawk. It's a great game. Pat Fryer Muth, the Muth was oh, loose. Great game. Then that's it. Yeah. Uh you had Brevin Jordan, Jesse James, Dan Arnold with eight targets. Yeah, he was all right. Oh. He was ready on that, that one. That is what you get. Um, I mean, you had Mike Kosicki with eight, and I guess I guess Dal Dallas Goddard was okay. So that's that's it. You you pretty much played against a bad tight end. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have Hawkinson this week, it you know. It was just fine. It was fine. Everyone, you got a free pass at the position. That's going to do it for today's show. Tomorrow is the waiver wire day. Very exciting to talk about that each and every week. Before we close, I want to thank Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. 
Recent things that went on pristine auction, a signed Jonathan Taylor jersey for just $70, a signed Debo Samuel mini helmet for just $78. You can get all kinds of goodies because they have hundreds of new auctions every single day. PristineAuction.com, use our registration code BALLERS, and you will get a $10 credit that you can use towards your first auction victory and purchase. Do you have anything to say before we close out the show, Jason? Oh, I just hope that the <laughs> trades go through soon. All across the NFL the ones? Leagues. Yes. It, you know, we trade deadline is what, tomorrow? Yeah, and we always get super hope, hopeful. And nothing happens. And nothing ever happens. I think one year we were like, whoa, this is this is wild. It's like they're doing fantasy football. And it was just that one I, time. I just hope that if the Titans trade for someone, it happens before the waiver wires show tomorrow. That's a great point. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you tomorrow for the waiver show. If you need something tonight for Monday night, a Monday Night Miracle, we hope that you get it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We're around the halfway point of the NFL season. And as we enter Week 9, DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is putting you in the center of this weekend's action. New customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize with their first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. Get in on the action now. It's simple. You just pick your lineup, you stay under the salary cap, and that's it. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at a $1 million payday. Download the DraftKings app now and use code BALLERS. This week, new customers, they get that free shot at a $1 million top prize and compete for millions of prizes across all contests. Enter code BALLERS to get a free shot at $1 million top prize with your first deposit. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details.